Welcome to your Building Elements module on Reef Construction. This module will begin with a covering of pitch roofs, introducing you to a range of materials and techniques for dealing with the formulation of bridges, valleys, and eaves. We'll further talk about insulation in pitch roof and finally deal with the issue of rainwater drainage and gutters. In the associated reading, we start with roof coverings for pitch roofs, focusing particularly on the using of tiles. You don't need to remember the sizing of the tiles, so that is not very important, but it is important to understand how these tiles are laid to allow for the rainwater to drip across the tiles and safely reach the ground. In most of these readings, pay close attention to the drawings alongside the reading to make sure you understand how these things are constructed. It would be important to focus not only on the tile but also the elements that go beneath it, for instance, the roofing felt or sarking and the tiling patterns as they are laid out. In the covering of pitch roofs, the ridges, the hips and the verge are particularly important as these need to be protected against the rainwater entering the building. So pay close attention to how the tiling for these particular areas are done. Once again, the size of the tiles is not very relevant, but it will give you an approximate idea of the overall size that you're dealing with within the construction of these details. Since we've already dealt with the different parts of a roof, you should be able to identify what a ridge or a hip or a valley is that would affect the tiling for the roof. and understood the plain tiles, you would recognize the value of having single lap tiles. The two versions discussed here are Spanish and Italian tiles, which show how the covering or lapping of tiles will protect us from the rainwater. The interlocking single lap tiles are then followed by the discussion of a pan tile, where the two versions of the channel and cover tile are incorporated into a single tile. This logic is also applied in a range of interlocking tiles. And finally, the similar idea of a tile is also used for stone coverings such as slate. The detail of slate tile is not that different from a normal tile. However, in the context of slate, areas like ridges become particularly difficult to deal with. And so alternatives need to be considered. After a discussion of different types of tiles and modular covers, we will be looking at the use of sheet metal to cover these low pitch roofs. Although metal sheets come in large sizes, and once again, you don't need to know the size exactly, but it will give you a sense of how big these sheets are. These are not designed for waterproofing purposes, and therefore the edges need to be dealt with carefully. There will be a series of details that you need to focus on, but don't forget the valuable role played by the felt underlay in achieving this effect. After the covering of the roofs, we will be focusing briefly on the thermal insulation. This section has a lot of detail on the thermal values of the roof which we do not need to focus on particularly, but we do need to understand the difference between a heated or a cold roof. The insulation for a warm or a cold roof would be particularly different, and this is indicated not only in the text, but also in the number of diagrams that have been provided. So please pay close attention to that. We will not be discussing the flat roof section so moving forward to the second part of this chapter, pitch roof, we now focus on the drainage of the pitch roof. Once again, the calculations are not particularly important, but you should understand how the drainage is considered across the entire edge of the roof, so as to allow for the water to run along the gutters into the rainwater pipes that are provided. Recognize also that there is a calculation to ensure that the water is safely dissipated. However, 
we do not need to deal with the flow capacities as a part of this course. This section will also help you understand and identify different types of gutter sections, such as segmental, half round, or OG gutter sections, and also help you recognize how these are assembled together to form a complete rainwater gutter system. The final section deals with the drainage of flat roofs in which the gradient of the roof ensures that the water travels to a rainwater outlet which is then led to a rainwater pipe through a rainwater head or catchment. That's all for this module. See you in the next one. Thanks.